Call the honourable member for Cunningham. Thank you, Acting Speaker. Acting Speaker, I rise today to, um, with great frustration, express my complete opposition to the bill before the House today. I have spoken on the Road Safety Remuneration Tribunal on many occasions in this House, and indeed um, I was the chair of the parliamentary committee that reviewed this bill before it was introduced. And so I've spent a lot of time looking at the issues around road safety, and it wouldn't surprise members that I would do so, given that my seat has a major trading port, the Port of Kembla, uh, in our region, and we deal with a lot of truck movements across our uh, entire region, and in particular, obviously, areas like the Mount Usley Road. And so the issue of um, road safety is a consistent one in our community, and uh, we've had decades of periods of looking at um, really serious issues that we've experienced around uh, truck-based accidents on the roads. And so, of course, for local members like myself and the member for Throsby, who was also a member of that committee, um, we are going to take a serious and, and in-depth interest in anything to do with road safety. And so I find it extremely offensive, cheap and rather pathetic that people opposite would attempt to characterise our engagement in this debate as motivated by some sort of um, control by unions, would, would uh, pass um, judgment on our motivation and linking it to being controlled by others. It's cheap, it's easy, it's lazy and it's wrong. I live in a region where we have had many, many decades of dealing with truck-related fatalities. And I took it very seriously when I chaired the committee that reviewed the legislation at looking at what was structurally happening in that industry that may be problematic not only for the safety and well-being of those who are driving the trucks, which is, of course, important. I come from a mining family. I know only too well the issues about how you structurally deal with safety can drive a particular type of behaviour and hopefully improve the likelihood that people will return home to their families. So that is important. But they uniquely are an industry that spends the vast majority of its work time sharing their workspace with us, the rest of the community. And so all of us are out on our roads, using our roads to um, do our own work, uh, move around with our families, participate in community life. And we need the assurance that those who are using our roads as their workplace are doing so in the safest and uh, most uh, effective way in order to ensure that we can all use the roads safely. And so I absolutely find comments by those opposite that have a shot about motivation of those on this side a really poor and sad reflection on the standards of debate that should happen in this place. I always find it frustrating that on this side of the House, in my own area, I meet with my Trades and Labor Council, I meet with my Business Chamber, I meet with peak community groups, and I treat everybody as a presumption that their motivation is to represent their organisation, their members, and to do a good job. We won't always agree. Um, but in this place consistently, and we are seeing it being ramped up and ramped up as we head into an election, those opposite seek to run a demonising campaign about the trade union movement in this country. And that's what we're doing here this week. That's what we're doing here. So the Prime Minister get, can get a double dissolution election on the back of once again going back to the standard repetitive conservative tradition of running an election campaign demonising the trade union movement. We even had a little bit of stop the boats thrown in today for good measure. It's a really legitimate question about whether, why they bothered changing leader at all, because it's back to the same songbook. Anyway, as frustrated as I am with that, I am going to bring um, to my contribution some reflections on why I think the Road Safety Remuneration Tribunal is a significant and important contribution to the road safety of the country. It is um, the case, and, and many members opposite have made the point, and it's a good point, that there are many ways in which to address road safety. And obviously, 
um, laws around behaviour and the use of the roads is one of those. And, um, people like the National Road Safety um, Heavy Vehicle Regulators and so forth are in place to ensure that the sorts of laws that we require people to comply with can be enforced. And the previous member spoke about you know, trucks don't um, speed because the police catch them. Well, you know, that would be nice if that did happen all the time, but it doesn't. They can't be everywhere all the time. And so if you look at uh, the history of um, road-related truck accidents, you will consistently find issues to do with truck drivers having made decisions that do lead to deaths on the road, accidents and injuries. And often those relate to speeding, they relate to the use of illegal drugs, and they relate to um, failure to maintain and um, look after the vehicle in a way that ensures it's road, road safe. Now you take that issue and you can go in one of two directions, and I su suggest that um, those opposite are taking one and we are taking another. That one direction is that that individual is personally responsible and must be prosecuted. And I don't think anybody in here would argue that if people do, do break the law that that shouldn't be the case. But the other thing you can do as a broader society, and indeed at least as a government, is to say, is there something systemic happening here that so many of those individuals are making those decisions? I would argue they're not by nature, and we've heard a lot of talk about the owner drivers that those opposite have met with, and I would say across the board, truck drivers are not somehow different to everybody else, more prone to um, illegal activity by the very nature of who they are. They are being driven to this by the way their industry is structured. And the reality is that a power imbalance occurs where those at the top of the chain are able to screw down and drive contracts that push the pressure and the responsibility further and further down that, that chain until the people who are sitting in the truck are having to make decisions that are absolutely unacceptable. And I don't believe it's sufficient for us as a government to say we are okay with addressing this issue by pursuing the individuals, but we're not okay with pursuing the structural problem in the industry that is pushing those decisions onto those individuals. We will continue to see the structural problem occur. We will continue to see cases where trucking companies are involved in truck accidents because the trucks weren't maintained, and sadly too often others on the road die in those cases as well. It is true you can improve infrastructure. Of course you can. We can get better roads. Finally, the New South Wales state government's got round to spending the four million we gave them before the last election to put a new truck stop on the Mount Oosley Road. I've been banging on about them for ages to get on with it. Great that it's finally underway. Of course the infrastructure is important. Of course getting better um, regulations in place, such as requiring people to take rest breaks and so forth, is important. Of course laws that require people to act in legal ways, such as not using drugs, not abusing drugs, not driving excess hours, not failing to main maintain their vehicles. Of course that's important. But we've been doing all that for decades, and we continue to see this industry have the highest death rate of workers in any industry in this country. We continue to see around about 25 deaths only recently over the recent months on our roads. We continue to see this as an industry with our ex excessive rates of suicide amongst the workers because of the pressure under which they work. Now, I come, as I said, from the mining industry. We fought hard over generations to stop the sorts of practices in the mining industry that were causing death. It was a very dangerous industry. And of course, one in 30. And of course, at the time, people would have put arguments about how that cost impact of those higher safety levels might impact on the, the um, business arrangements at the time. They're never easy decisions, they're never easy processes. But no one in our um, community would argue that, that, that loosening up on the safety requirements we put in place in that industry because of its horrific death rates was not the right thing to do. The time has come for the trucking industry. 
The workers in that industry deserve the same systemic approach to their industry to make it safe, not only for them, but uniquely because they share their workplace with the rest of us on the roads. Now, I have been to many, many briefings um, on this particular issue since the change of government. I have met with the widows who come here to talk to the parliamentarians about, in one case, um, the lady's husband, in another case, her uh, husband was actually killed on the side of the road wasn't the truck driver. Um, I've talked to truck drivers, the, the gentleman who's gone public, saying he's attended 52 funerals in his working life. I mean, it's incomprehensible. If there were 52 people killed in any other industry, we would not be tolerating continued structural arrangements that allow for that level of death rate. That's how serious this is. And I don't bring anything to this dispatch box other than a really genuine and serious concern that we've got an industry that's crying out for us to do something about it, and we have communities who share their roads with that industry saying to us there is a bigger problem here and it needs to be addressed. Now, we did, as a result of those, um, th those, that evidence that, was coming, that came forward, and I refer um, honourable members to the advisory bill on the uh, report on the bill um, that the committee did, and there is a dissenting report in there. We came to the view that the most effective way to do that would be to establish the tribunal and task it with the job of looking at the industry and at particular sectors of the industry to see whether there was a chain of command problem that was putting pressure unreasonably on all levels of that chain so that the, the cascade effect was that you ended up with unsafe practices. Now, if decisions are made by tribunals, sometimes they are difficult for one part of the community, and we work as parliaments and governments to find transition methods and how you would actually manage that and uh, how you would do it effectively. And it looked initially like that was what the government was going to do. But then it decided to just jump and abolish the tribunal. And I think that is a really short-sighted decision to have made. I think if they wanted to discuss, as indeed our shadow minister said, how these things could be implemented and managed in ways that took people's concerns into consideration, we could have at least continued to progress the issue of the structural problems around safety in the trucking industry. But they haven't. They've decided to abolish the tribunal and done it with a whole lot of rhetoric, and I hope not all speakers um, fall into this trap on the other side, of simply union bashing, of simply having a go at those of us who, because of generations of understanding of the role of unions in protecting people's well-being and safety at work, that somehow we bring dirty hands to this debate, because I won't tolerate that. It's an unacceptable assessment of what the debate's about, and I'm not going to uh, allow that sort of comment to stand unchallenged. It's beneath people in this place. We can have differences of opinion about how to improve the road safety issues, but I think it's pretty awful and cheap to question people's motivations when it comes to safety. Now, I say um, to the government, talk to the opposition, talk to the key players in the sector, certainly. Let's see if there are ways that we can find to make this a manageable issue for those that are having some problems. But we need this tribunal. We need it because we've had decades that have proven that the other measures, while important, infrastructure improvements, rules and regulations, laws and enforcement, while they are important, they are not enough. There is a structural problem. It's impacting the safety of everyone on our roads. This tribunal needs to be allowed to do its job and this bill should be removed from this House. Thank you, Deputy